Hey, hey, and welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. I'm Chelsea Bussemeyer. Thanks for joining me today. And today we are going to draft a pattern from a pattern for a pocket. Now there are never enough pockets in really anything to go around. And I also find with women's clothes, the pockets are often just too small. So whether you're adjusting a pocket, uh, you want to add a pocket or change the pocket, this is a tutorial how you can make a nice uh, swing or scoop pocket. So the traditional kind of pocket, oftentimes they're stitched. So like a scoop pocket that's stitched um, on like a pair of jeans, that kind of thing. Now I am using a pattern I drafted last year for uh, our new family tradition of matching PJ pants. And I really love mine. I wear them all the time and so I'm excited to have a new pair. So when that one's in the wash, I've got still got one to wear. But if you know me, you know that I almost never sew the same pattern twice. Or if I do, I always switch it up a little bit. So there's always something to be changed in the style design elements, how you uh, mix and match fabrics. And really, even if you are using a similar pattern base, can make a totally different garment. So my original pattern had just a regular seam pocket, so right in the side seam, so that I still had that pocket to slide whatever I need into, but it wasn't actually part of the design. So that's why I'm going to do the scoop pocket. I was thinking about doing them uh, like, you know, a five pocket pant, uh, doing uh, back pockets and maybe the, the little pocket as well and stitching it too, like jeans, but I think... That might be a little bit too industrious as all of that top stitching is going to take a lot of extra uh, work. But for today, we are going to do the pattern and then next week I will do a step-by-step -step sew along so that you know how to kind of piece the pocket together and stitch it in place if you are adding this to a pair of pants and you're not exactly sure about the protection plan because that will also not be included in your pattern if you are uh, pattern hacking and adding this pocket in. So I love pockets. I know everyone I talk to loves pockets too, and it is a great uh, ability to be able to add them to whatever you want and make them look the way you want. So let's head on over to the table and get started. So here is my pants from last year, and this is the pocket. As you can see, there's little notches here. So that's the opening that I had. And I really do like the size. It's nice and big. I can fit my whole phone in it, my whole hand, lots of things. So I'm gonna actually use this pocket as my base, but I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you can make a pants pocket without any pieces, except starting out with your front leg. So our front leg, we've got our side seam, the waistband, and the first thing I'm going to do is just decide how big of an opening I want. So think about, you know, the size of the hand that's going to go in it. So this is my hand. Uh, we're going to go kind of down from the top with this kind of swing pocket and rounded edge. So I want to make sure that it's far enough away from the side seam that I can really get my hand in well. So I think I'm going to go about here for the opening. It's a little bit less than half. It's kind of nice to do um, a little bit offset when we're breaking anything up. If we divide it right in half, then it can sometimes uh, just look a little funny. So a little bit less or a little bit more would be better right along the top here. Uh, as we go down, we want it to also be far enough away from the top edge, but not too far when we're thinking about the depth of our pocket uh, and we don't want it to be too gapy either. So I think something like this maybe can maybe be a little bit, a little bit higher. I'm going to go just a touch higher. So first I'm going to draw in my line of where I want the pocket to be when it is finished. So this is going to be the, the edge of my pocket. Pockets can take on so many shapes. There we go. So it really doesn't matter 
what shape if you come down straighter uh, if you go at an angle there's the diagonal pockets there's so many shapes you can do whatever you like just know that this is going to be your finished pocket edge i'm going to double check with my hand make sure you're thinking with the stitch line so the seam allowance removed yeah i think that will be nice okay so there's a couple ways that you can do this what we really need is one decide first if we're going to line the pocket entirely with our fabric so as you can uh, imagine on jeans or anything like that you're going to want jeans filling in this space here but oftentimes it ends just after uh, the edge of the the pants overlaps so that your pocket can be thinner because i'm using a flannel material I'm, and I'm going to use that for my pocket lining as well. My pocket can go all the way through. So I can actually use this original pocket for my back pocket lining. I don't actually need to create any extra piece for this. Um, if you don't have the original pocket, then you can make yourself this piece simply by overlapping a little bit more with your garment and deciding how big of a pocket you want to make. You'll notice here on this edge that the corner of the pocket is rounded and it's also the lowest point. So this just helps your pockets to not collect extra unnecessary um, debris and lint in them. If it was a square corner, then oftentimes in that corner, lint gets trapped and if it's level on the bottom, some pockets will be like that as well, then you're gonna create kind of a trap here in the corner because this is the lowest point. Gravity will just kind of pull the debris down and it will go in and out uh, with your hand each time rather than collecting in your pocket. So that being said, what we then need to think about is our front pocket and how that pocket needs to be shaped as well as removing this piece that we no longer need. So I'm just gonna start off by drawing in my seam allowance. So whatever type of seam allowance you wanna use, I love 5 8 of an inch or kind of one centimeter. That's kind of my standard go-to seam allowance. I'm just going to mark it along here. Connect my dots. And I know now this is the seam allowance. I just pre-added it um, to make it easier on myself. Otherwise, if I wanted to use this piece to help guide my making my um, back pocket lining, I might have cut it right along this edge and then added an extra piece of paper. But this makes it easier for me because I already do have this back pocket. When you are creating this back pocket, the thing you really want to remember is just trace the original pant before you cut it out. So uh, one easy method of doing that is simply laying your pattern on an extra piece of paper, tracing it, and I'm just going to overlap a little bit. It's nice to have a little bit of overlap um, after the pocket ends here. And trace it down as low as you want to go. This marker is running out of juice. Let's go with this one. I'm also going to make just a little notch where the pocket should line up. So I know this is where I need to line up the edge of my finished pocket when I go to attach this new piece. And then this is where I would choose the shape of the actual pocket itself, the pocket lining. Oh, this one has a much squarer corner. 
we'll round that up a little bit. There we go. So now I just created a piece of pocket uh, if my pattern didn't already have one. So back to this piece, we're going to cut this off right along the edge of our seam allowance. And then you can see it's already starting to look like a pocket. For our second piece of pocket, however, we need to follow this edge when matching it up. I'm also going to add my notches here, my new notches. I've got my notches from the original pocket lined up, but I'm going to add a new notch right where the pocket's going to line up. Because if we don't line this up correctly, then our waistband could grow, our pocket could be a little bit at an angle and start to torque our garment, or it could also be, end up getting slid in too much and our waistband getting too small. So having these notches will just help me line up the finished edge of my pocket when I go to stitch this pocket together. So this piece is now finished. And we'll take our paper back. And now we need to do exactly the same thing. Just gonna make sure I have enough paper. There we go, that's enough paper. So now we need to do exactly the same thing we did with the top portion of the pocket to create our second piece of pocket. I'm just gonna copy this edge now this edge already has seam allowance on it, so, so we don't need to calculate for any seam allowance on these edges, so we can just straight trace them. I'm just going to line this up once again with my notches and mark where the edge of the pocket should line up. So for the second piece of pocket, however, we don't want to just freehand draw it in. We want it to match up with our first pocket. So that's why we're going to just remove the leg and then line up our notches from this pocket. We have our finished, finished edge here. So the notch needs to be in just a little bit smaller, our, our seam allowance distance. But you'll notice too, especially in the paper, because it's stiff and flat, it's much easier to line this up. When it's fabric, it's way more likely to get offset if you don't have your notches. Okay, so now that our notches are all lined up, then we can simply go and trace the outside edge of our pocket. And again, it really doesn't matter the size of your pocket, the shape of your pocket, I just prefer this pocket shape for the reasons I mentioned earlier, and I always like to make sure that my pocket is really big enough, my whole hand can fit in, and if you have, you know, maybe a really large smartphone, you might want to lay it on here too, so you can make sure that your pocket is large enough to accommodate it, and it's not going to be hanging out like they almost always are otherwise. Okay, so now we have our perfect pocket shape for our inner piece. Our stitch line is gonna be slightly smaller. I'm just gonna freehand draw this on just as a placeholder. Um, but I'll have it, have it even when I stitch together. And then we have our outer edge. So I'm just gonna mark this with front pocket. And I'm also going to put on how many times I need to cut it out. So I need to cut it out two times, once for each pocket. And I'm just gonna make a quick note what pattern this belongs to.
That way, if this pattern piece starts uh, freelancing around my sewing room and I pick it up, I know exactly which pattern it belongs to and what it's for. So I'm going to keep this extra piece uh, as well, just in case I ever want to make these pants with the regular edge. I could also use my po pocket pattern and line it up and cut out my piece in one piece whole again like this as well. So this kind of shows you if you do have a pocket with a swing pocket or rounded pocket and you want to do no pockets or maybe patch pockets that you just stitch on top or um, add a seam pocket, you can just line up your piece like this when you're going to cut out the pant leg and then you can remove the pocket as well. So let's get this piece cut out. Okay, so here we go. We now have all three pieces of the pattern that we're gonna need to create a pocket. We'll have these two on the inside and then we'll be finishing off the edge of the pocket opening itself by attaching it here and then attach both pieces together close our pocket and um, it's ready to go and attach to the back leg so there you have it now you know how to make your own pattern pieces so that you can add a rounded pocket to any pattern and we even went over a few extra tips. If you already have a pocket, you know now how you can just trace out your piece without the pocket and do maybe a seam pocket instead of a scoop pocket or whatever other way you'd like to finish off this garment. Don't forget, if you do want step-by-step -step instructions of how to put this pocket together, I will be posting that next week on the channel. If it's already passed next week, the link will be down below in the description so you can just follow right along uh, to that and I will show you how you can keep yourself from getting stuck and make sure that you do uh, the pocket assembly in the right order. Be sure to check out my Facebook page if you are not in my group already, if you'd like to stay connected with me throughout the week. And there will also be a link down below where you can join my email list as that is the best place to stay connected if you want to uh, be in the loop for live classes and the virtual classes that I teach. And until next week, take care and happy sewing.